Hello everyone and thank you for inviting me. My name is Una McLean and I'm a ninth grader at North Hollywood Highly Gifted Magnet. I'm going to show you my science fair project that I worked on last year. But first, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Andrew Marshall and Trin Liu from the ABCD study. I'm a participant in this study and last summer I attended a party put on by them. I listened to the discussion about the families that were involved in the ABCD study and the data that was discussed. What struck me was the discussion about lead playing a role and how ABCD would like to explore that more. My school was doing a science fair project at the time and I thought that maybe I could also explore lead in drinking water across Los Angeles. I emailed Trin Liu and asked if the ABCD study ever advised kids with science fair projects. She immediately emailed me back and said that they would love to help me. She also got Dr. Andrew Marshall involved and from there we worked together over the next five months. They even came to my school science fair. I owe them a really big thank you for helping me in so many ways. Thank you. Here I am with a picture of my science board. My project is titled Public Drinking Water, Comparing Lead Exposure Through Water, School Rating and Performance, Home Values, Family Income, Demographics, and Age of Homes and Parks. Water is an essential part of life on Earth. But water is only as clean as the soil surrounding it, tanks that hold it, and the pipes that carry it. The problem this experiment addressed was whether or not the water samples taken across Los Angeles contained lead. I hypothesized that if the results came back positive, then the school rating and performance would be lower. There would be less diversity in the schools, the cost of living would be lower, and the age of homes and parks would be older than the areas where the lead was not found. Overall, nine locations were selected. South LA, Boyle Heights, Highland Park, Granada Hills, Valley Village, Tarzana, Playa Vista, Porter Ranch, and Woodland Hills. The locations were chosen using a lead risk map on Vox.com recommended to me by Dr. Andrew Marshall and Trin Liu. Playa Vista, Porter Ranch, and Woodland Hills are low lead risk areas marked in blue. Granada Hills, Valley Village, and Tarzana are medium lead risk areas marked in orange, and the South LA, Boyle Heights, and Highland Park are high lead risk areas marked in red. By the way, anyone can visit the Vox map and find out how their area ranks on the map using their address or zip code. I went to parks in the selected areas and using a lead test kit ordered from carolina.com, tested the water for lead. Tests that tested positive for lead suggested that at the time of testing, there was greater than 15 parts per billion of lead in the drinking water fountains. Tests that tested negative either didn't have any lead or had less than 15 parts per billion of lead. Then I got home and using various websites, I collected data on school rating and performance for math and English proficiency, home values and um, income, diversity of schools and the ages of the homes and parks. After compiling and organizing my data, I put these charts together to understand what I had found. Figure one is a graph of the parks that were established where water was tested. The graph indicates that the parks in the high and medium lead risk areas were all established within a 10 year period from 1960 to 1970. Two of the parks in the low lead risk were a lot newer but built in the 1990s. Figure two is a graph of the median year of home construction. I gathered data from the houses surrounding the parks and using the LA County Assessor site generated this chart. You can really see how, home, uh, how homes in the high and medium lead risk area are a lot older than the low lead risk areas. Figure three is a graph of the average home and rental values. The data indicates the lower the lead risk, the higher the median home and rental value. All of the medium and low lead risk areas had a median home value higher than $300,000. Figure four is a graph of the average non-low income students from elementary, middle, and high schools. As you can see, there is an upward inclination from high lead risk to low lead risk. There is a significant gap in the non-low income students when considering Porter Ranch has 59% non-low income and Boyle Heights is at 8%. Figure 5 shows the average of elementary, middle, and high school math and English proficiency. The last two columns of the graph are the state standard for math and English. 
There is a definite upward trend for English proficiency from high lead risk to low lead risk areas, and a slight increase in math proficiency with Porter Ranch performing much higher than the state standards. Also, all of the low lead risk areas perform better than the state standard for English, unlike most of the areas from the high and the medium low lead risk levels. Figure 6 is the average percentile ranking in California. You can clearly see an upward trend from the high lead risk to low lead risk. Schools in the low lead risk areas have a higher ranking in California than the high lead risk schools. This slide shows the demographics from all nine locations split into lead risk levels. As you can see in the top row, which is from the high lead risk groups, has much less diversity than the middle and the bottom row, which are the medium and low lead risk groups. As you move from high to medium to low, the schools get more diverse. Here are my results from actually testing the drinking fountain water from each of the parks. First, these are the park locations that test negative, which means that there was either not any lead present or there was less than 15 parts per billion of lead in the water sample. Just because an area tested negative for 15 parts per billion lead in the water doesn't mean there isn't any lead present. It could mean that the test was not sensitive enough to detect it. They include Boyle Heights, Highland Park, Granada Hills, Playa Vista, Porter Ranch, and my control group, which is Aquafina bottled water. These are the locations where lead was found at either 15 parts per billion or higher. South Los Angeles, Valley Village, Tarzana, and Woodland Hills. What was surprising to me was that Woodland Hills tested positive, considering it was a low lead risk location. I thought the main reason it tested positive was due to the year for the park establishment, or the age of the park. Its park was established even before some of the high and the medium lead risk parks. This experiment has a real world application. If city officials aren't careful with what they put into their water, incidents such as those that happen in Flint, Michigan could happen elsewhere. If I were to redo my experiment, I would use test kits that test for other metals as well. I think if a student like me tests nine locations around LA and finds lead in four out of nine locations chosen, there is a good chance there are more harmful metals present that we don't know about. Recently, in March of this year, the state of California voted on Proposition 13, which could have allowed installation of new pipes and tiles in the schools to reduce lead in water and asbestos in tiles. Sadly, people voted against it because they didn't want their taxes to go up. The best approach is to eliminate the source of lead and educate people in the community. Find the place where a person is first exposed and take action to prevent further exposure. The effort made to reduce all lead exposure can substantially improve the living environment and cognitive brain development of a child. I wanted to leave you with one last thought on my project and its real world application. I recently saw a map from the Los Angeles Public Health COVID dashboard and I was struck by how the box lead risk map and this map of COVID cases by city mirror each other. Keep in mind on the box map, red indicates high lead risk and on the COVID map, dark blue indicates higher caseload. You might be surprised to find that areas of low income and less diversity, just like in my project, are experiencing higher numbers of COVID cases than the wealthier, more diverse areas. I think my project is about much more than lead in the drinking water at parks. It also speaks to a bigger problem of inequality facing children and their families all across our country. Well, that concludes my project. Thank you for inviting me to your meeting and listening to my project. I'm very grateful for your time.